Hey guys, it's Judy here. Welcome to today's video. I'm going to be repotting and kind of just like revamping, restyling, rejuzging this plant because it's currently, I'm not, I don't like the way it looks. So um, I'm going to do that with you guys in today's video. So let's go. Okay, so I was on a plant chore roll this morning and I thought I may as well just film this for you guys while I'm doing it and just show you what I'm gonna do as I'm doing it and why I'm doing it. So this is a Skindapsis Pictus Agraeus. I think that's how you say it. I'm gonna leave the name of it edited onto the screen here. Um, and it's currently climbing up a pole. Now this plant is quite large, it's quite established. It is beautiful. I love Skindapsis Pictus. I, uh, have a, I have a weakness for plants with leaves that have silver markings and velvety feel like this. It's currently climbing up a pole and it looks to be quite established in this kind of situation. Um, but I don't like the way it looks. I actually like my trailing plants to be trailing plants. Now I know when trailing plants grow up something, their leaves get bigger. And I mean, I like big leaves, but I also like my trailing plants to be trailing plants. So what I'm gonna do is take it off the pole. Um, it looks a little bit scraggly. It looks like it was just kind of like wound up there without a care, without any care um, by the growers, which is fair enough. They probably have like hundreds of this to do in a day. So they don't really wanna care for it the way that we do. So I'm gonna care for it today and give it a bit of TLC. So I'm gonna be taking it out of this big massive pot that it's currently sitting in and put it into a pot that's still quite large but a, definitely smaller than the one it is currently in. The soil that it's sitting in also looks like it needs a bit of a refresh. It's looking just a bit compact and very, very sandy. As well as I think this plant may have come from growers from Queensland. I, this isn't one of my plants, I bought this from another somewhere else. And I don't really like the soil. I, I just wanna change it, okay? I just wanna refresh it and give it, a, give it a bit of a zhuzh. Also, it looks like it's pretty root bound too. Like from the holes in the bottom here, I can see that the roots are quite established. So this plant really just needs a bit of TLC. I took some cuttings off it the other day and propagated those, but they actually rotted off in some really bad quality sphagnum moss, and I'll probably cover that in another video and talk about it, but that's not, it's, that's another story for another video. So what I'm gonna do is just get started. Uh, it's currently tied up with this rubber cable tie. I don't know, it's rubber because they probably don't want something quite so harsh on the stems but I do need to actually be careful as I'm removing it because it looks like this, the roots have actually taken hold into the core pole itself. So I might need to cut it. I might need to cut it off the pole. I, what, what I want to do is have it in this pot and just and um, run the stems around the base of the pot and just have it grow as a, a, as a hanging plant. I don't really like the way it looks on this pole. It just looks a bit scraggly. I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about how I'm gonna go. I might actually end up breaking some stems off this because it looks like it's quite embedded. Those aerial roots have really taken a hold in the coir pole. So I'm feeling a little bit skeptical about how this is gonna end up looking. It's gonna look a little bit, um, what's the word? Who's calling me? It's a bit hard to do when it's like, at a higher level than me, but I did want to have it in the camera. <laughs> I haven't had this plant for very long. I've got to put my phone on silent, seriously. So I haven't had this plant for very long and I've currently had it sitting in a separate room in its quarantine state because it's part of my pest prevention process so that I don't introduce new pests into my current existing collection. And I think it's pest free, but you know, the thing is, you, you never really know. I like to keep my new plants separate from my current plants for at least like two months at least. Just make sure that there's nothing, no nasties there. So what I'm taking off here is just some of the more damaged leaves, the leaves that like don't look too crash hot. I've realized this is probably gonna be a bit more of a task than I anticipated because, simply because the aerial roots have already established themselves into this core pole. 
Like, I wonder how long this was sitting at the growers because honestly, this is well established into this core pole. Anyway, it's just the aerial roots that are sitting in the pole. So I'm, I'm just gonna cut them. I feel bad cutting them, but at the same time, like plants are resilient. Plants are tenacious, like they'll grow back. And there's no point keeping it in a, in a, like, in a format or in a form that you don't like, that I'm not enjoying. So you can do whatever you want to your plants, really, you guys. I need to stand up. Sitting down is not working. <laughs> oh, there you go, I still fit in the frame. <laughs> I don't really know what to talk about while I'm trying to get it off the pole. Let's just go for it, I say. If you were gonna do something like this with one of your plants, spring is a really good time to do it because it is the growing season and while it is still introducing some form of shock to your plant, it will bounce back quicker in the spring because again, growing season. I feel really bad doing this. Continues to do it. <laughs> Skindapsis pictus are a little bit of a slower growing plant for me as well. They look very similar to pothos. They have a very similar care needs as pothos, but they are not pothos. I know they've been called to that before, like a silver satin pothos, but it's not a pothos. It's a skindapsis, which is a whole different family of plant all on its own. I think people mistake it for pothos because the care and the characteristics of it are quite similar to pothos. So it's, it's easy to understand how people have mistaken them to be a variety of pothos. Not that I'm too fussed, like if I see someone calling this a silver satin pothos, I'm not gonna attack them or anything, like it's not that deep. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of other more important things to worry about than to correct people on the names of plants. Not unless they're asking, of course. I don't usually offer advice unless people ask. I mean, my whole channel is advice that people didn't ask for, but I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I just broke a stem. All right, well, I just broke one of the really long stems, but that's okay. I'm still gonna run this around the pot and each node will self-propagate into the soil. So that's okay, I'm not too stressed about it. Propagation is a wonderful thing and there's more of it and there's more ways than one to achieve that So we're almost at the base This is so dry This whole thing is really super dry. I mean, that's my fault. I haven't watered it for a bit, but Still wow All right, it looks like the roots have really established themselves into this pot and into this coir pole itself and I know that this process is going to shock the plant, but it, it'll bounce back. I know it will. It might just take some time for it to bounce back, but in time, it's gonna look a lot better. Trust me, or don't trust me, it's up to you. I'm not gonna tell you who to trust and who to not trust. <laughs> All right, now, this pot is very root bound. I'm gonna pull it out and show you, I just know it. I've said that before and I was wrong, but let's see. Ooh, can you hear that sand? There is a lot of sand in this soil mix. Look at this. This is one root-bound silver satin. I just vacuumed the floor literally just like half an hour ago. Dang it. Looks like I'm vacuuming again. All right, so this is a whole lot of root for not a whole lot of plant. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna cut off the roots, but I'm gonna shake off as much of this sand or soil as I possibly can. And I really should have thought this through. I don't have anything to catch all this soil. Oh well, looks like I'm just vacuuming again. I made a really big mess before, repotting my fiddly fig tree. Okay, and no, I need something to catch this. This is giving me anxiety. All right, here's a tray. See how all that soil is just falling right out? There, that's actually not soil. Like this is like 60% sand. Right, this is 
is gonna get a whole lot worse before it's gonna get a whole lot better. Look at this roots. This is insane. I know I say don't disturb your plant, but wow. Also, I'm having second thoughts about this pot, but there's just so much roots and not a lot of plant. So, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stick to my gut feeling and just put it in here. But I do want to shake out a lot of that. It's not great soil that it's currently sitting in. All right, I well and truly disturbed this plant. I know it, I have said don't do this, but this soil is just falling out, you guys. And the roots look pretty healthy, actually. All right, I've got some fresh soil mix here. This is soil mix that I've made. If you guys wanna see a video about that, I've got a whole video about it, how I make my soil mix. I just put a little bit at the bottom of the pot there. And I am, I know this is gonna like be super root bound, like really soon, considering how much root there is there. But I wanna see what happens, okay? This is all a learning, learning process for me. So much root, wow. Now we have that sitting in there like that. Now I'm gonna backfill this pot with some fresh soil. I have it in a big box down here. I'm not gonna put it on the table because it's just, it's too big and it's not gonna fit on the table. So now I'm gonna backfill this with some beautiful, fresh, chunky, airy soil that's gonna allow those beautiful roots to breathe a bit of a gentle tap to fill in all those extra air pockets. It's gonna take a lot of like shaking and tapping and patting down because that root system was something else. I've never seen such an insanely huge root system. That must have been like in that pot for a long time. Definitely time for a refresh. Just gonna try and get that soil to enter in all those little nooks and crannies of those roots. All right, when I water it, that soil is gonna just find its way through all those holes and it'll filter down through the plant, through the pot. So that's gonna have to do. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find some pins and pin those nodes down around the top of the pot so I have a really full plant up the top. So I'm gonna find some pins. I'll be right back. All right, I've got some bobby pins. They're not my favorite ones to use because I still need to like open them up Whereas like my favorite pins to use are the, the actual U pins. They're already shaped like that. I don't have to bend them open, but that's okay. These are all I have, so that's what I'm gonna use. So what I'm gonna do is run those nodes around the base of the pot until they went in a way that they come in contact with the soil. So I've made a whole video about why I do this. This is another method of propagation. When those nodes come in contact with the soil, they will start to shoot off aerial roots and embed themselves into the soil. Very much like those aerial roots had embedded themselves into that pole there and had made themselves comfortable in it. When those aerial roots activate or those roots at the nodes activate, they will take their place in the soil and start to shoot off new growth from each one of those nodes. So it's like propagating without the cutting. I don't like these pins, they're not working. It's a little bit of fiddling around because it's quite unruly and messy, but it'll be so worth it. I know it once this plant comes back to life. So it does take, if you wanted to do this with one of your plants, it does take a bit of maneuvering and trying to work out 
what vine can fit where and if it'll sit down in the soil, you know. You could also take some soil and pop it over the stem or where the node is. These pins don't stick, man. I hate these pins. You can see this gigantic mess that I've made. This is the reality of it, guys. <laughs> All right, so I found some better pins. These ones, I like using pins like these because they're long and they just like go right into the soil and they stay, whereas bobby pins are so short and they just pop back out. So, all right, let's try again. There's really not much more to say about this. You know, all I really gotta do is just run it around the pot. You know, run it around the pot. This is gonna look a lot better in a few months time. I know it will. <laughs> it's just right now it feels a little bit it feels, if you didn't know what you were doing, I could see how this would be like really anxiety inducing for some people. I know I'm probably gonna lose some leaves in the next few weeks off this as well because I did just like disturb it. But like I said, it's resilient, they'll pop back. As long as I'm giving it extra light, extra care, extra warmth, and not just leaving it in a cold dark corner to dry and like regain its strength by itself. I need to give it some help, you know? I've got some longer stems escaping the pot, that's fine. They can escape the pot, they can hang down the sides. The top there isn't quite full yet, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna actually cut this because I don't wanna risk losing some stems. If they are still connected to each other, then they'll probably live. <laughs> So I'm not gonna cut them up, but I am going to, that's the stem that I accidentally broke. It's not actually connected to anything. So I'm going to just stick that stem in the soil and also run this vine around the pot. Those aerial roots that are already growing on the stems there, they can attach them, they will start to grow themselves into the soil that they come in contact with, which is why I say run those nodes around the pot and you'll have a lot more lusher and fuller plant at the top. Like a lot of people say, how do you grow, grow your plants so full and so lush and so large? That's the thing, you have to have more than one plant in the pot in order for them to be lush and full. Like it's not gonna work with just one plant. I mean, one plant will work if you, in time, it'll grow bigger and you can keep running it around the pot, but it just takes so much longer. So you really gotta have more than one plant in the pot. Even if you have that one plant, you take cuttings and plant those cuttings back into the base of the pot. And in time, each node should activate if it, you know, if it, if it does activate and grow, each node will become a whole new plant. This is probably gonna look better after I give it a good water as well. Those roots will settle in and the plant itself will bounce back and will survive. All right, so I've just run that whole vine around the pot. It looks a lot more lush and full at the top there. Now what I'm gonna do is take some more soil and kind of like backfill all those spaces where those nodes are sitting on the surface of the soil. I kind of want to give it some soil to cover those nodes. Give them something to grow into, you know? It's a really messy job. It actually feels stressful. <laughs> but I know this is gonna work because I've done it before. I think it's stressful for me because it's messy and I don't like messy. Right, I'm gonna put this in the shower so that all that soil will settle down through those roots then I'm gonna clean this up, then we can finish off the video, I guess. <laughs> Look, 
I will update you. It's dripping everywhere because I just watered it. <laughs> I will update you guys in a future video when I do a chatty repot or plant update video. I'll show you guys how this one is going. So that's how it looks. I love the way that it's looking now. So much better, so much more compact, full and lush rather than a spindly vine growing up a pole that didn't really look great and it was like a really big pot and anyway i just feel like for me personally it looks a lot better like this um, you can do whatever you want with your plants as long as you are not neglecting them or over caring for them so it's just finding a bit of balance in the middle and doing what you know works i mean if, obviously if you don't know if you're new to plants you don't know really what you're doing take it step by step you don't have to do something like this all at once with it just get used to your plant, get to know them, and then you can probably go ahead and do something like this, which is maybe a little bit more advanced in plant care. I don't know. I don't know, if you know what you're doing, then do it. <laughs> but yeah, this is just something that I've been wanting to do with this plant for a long time. So I'm excited to see how this goes. I will update you guys later on. Um, I have a meeting in 15 minutes, which I completely lost track of time, so I gotta run. Thanks guys for watching. Please like the video if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, it's Judy here. Welcome to today's video. Why am I so excited? I really don't feel this excited that I look. <laughs>